Okay, this video is all about emotional regulation and the reason why it's so, so important when you're creating a dream life and or revamping your thoughts or getting your thoughts in check and doing all this creative work that we're doing, that we're choosing for our lifestyle is because it creates a neutral place for you. So you want to be in a neutral place. You want your self-concept to reflect neutrality, right? And neutrality is like the jumping off point for everything, right? And it allows you to remember who you are. It allows you to remember that your thoughts create and that you are the creator here and you are the one in charge. And this is your life for you to mold, right? You're the clay maker. You're the clay molder. I meant so you are the one doing everything here. And so it's so massively important for you to really have this self-regulation in your back pocket like as a thing that you do regularly right and a lot of us don't even realize we need emotional regulation right we're, we're dysregulated all the time and we don't realize it you know and these can come up you know emotional dysregulation can come up as a eating disorder it can come up as binge eating it can it can show up as you know uh, hurting yourself not on purpose right but accidentally right like it can come up in all these various ways it can come up as yelling at someone that you care about it can come up as you know driving really fast or having road rage or these are all the ways to notice it in your life as a way of like understanding you know that you are actually dysregulated you know it's a way of um a way of recognizing that you actually are you know going through a dysregulation a moment right a moment where you you're not actually dealing with your emotions and there's something in there that's creating a extreme emotion within you right it's something that you need to dissipate or learn how to neutralize right and this is what I'm going to teach you in this video and it's beyond important when it comes to creating your life and I want to give you a trigger warning as well I'm going to try to do this in like I'm trying to create my videos in 10 minutes or like 10 to 12 minutes so hopefully I can get this topic out in that amount of time so um so yeah it's um it, it, it's so important and yes I, I want to put a trigger warning on this because I'm going to be mentioning just words basically that can be triggers for people like um because I am going to talk about uh, a little bit about my childhood just to explain how um just just as an explanation tool so anyway so right now if you have any triggers make sure you click off this video but I'm not going to go into detail it's just going to be mentioning a couple words so not too big of a deal but yeah I just wanted to mention that because some people can be sensitive to this kind of thing okay so anyway um so these are all the ways as I was saying that it can show up as an adult right like you feel like extremely stressed or you get um you know you're triggered and you're yelling or you 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 feel always rushing or you doing self-harm even though it's not it, it could not be on purpose right sometimes it's not on purpose you're just stubbing your toe and you're cutting yourself and you're you're rushing and you're and you're not focused but you can be like kind of it's almost like destructive behavior behavior that's going under the radar right you're not aware of it but it is destructive and it does mean you are not emotionally regulated and as a kid um I had a lot of kind of like volatility and my environments were not safe for me like it didn't feel emotionally safe or uh, physically safe you know and I, I was a very sensitive kid so a lot of these um, emotional dysregulation uh, things that I was doing as a child stuck with me into adulthood and that can happen to a lot of us and I just wanted to point that out because even if you don't think you have um, emotional dysregulation as an adult, if you had it as a child, you probably do have it as an adult because this, these patterns were created as kids, right? We, we got into certain, you know, self-harm or whatever we were doing as kids. Like for example, me, I would cut myself as a kid. I know it, it's kind of, it's sad, but it was a way for me to feel like I was dissipating an emotion, right? Because I had such intense emotions as a kid. And I felt like so stressed as a kid and actually, um, you know, <laughs> was in environments that I didn't feel safe or I was confused and stressed and, and um, you know, out of control. As kids, sometimes when we're put in sort of situations that don't feel good for us, we feel really out of control. So it was a way for me to control, you know, and the same with um, 
eating, I would like not eat or I would like binge eat, you know, and that, and that was something that happened in my adult years too, as a residual um, thing from, from being so dysregulated or not, not knowing. Okay. The camera died. So I'm back. <laughs> okay. So, um, what I was saying was it's like the same type of emotional dysregulation that you had as a kid can be a pattern, right? And, and it can show up as different ways as an adult, but it's the same type of emotional, um, you're almost setting off the same emotional response because you're so used to it, right? It's like a feedback mechanism, if that makes sense, right? You you get so used to a certain feeling, a certain emotion from your environment that you will recreate the same circumstances to get that same feeling. For example, me and having, you know, feeling in like that I was in a volatile situation or unsafe in my environment, I actually created situations where I was sexually assaulted as an adult, right? So it was like literally the same kind of feeling of uns unsafety translated into something else as, a, as an adult, right? Because I hadn't yet worked on my belief system and my thoughts. And by now I've totally uprooted my entire belief system and have a totally new belief system or else I wouldn't have been able to create the life that I have been that I have been able to create, right? With amazing friends and amazing living environment, beautiful resources, you know, money coming in, lots, lots of money coming in, like, you know, good relationships with people, you know, everything like that. I would not have been able to, to create that if I had those old stories playing. So it really was about looking at that stuff. And the thing that helped me the most, or one of the biggest keys for me was emotional regulation because I could really identify what was causing these emotions and work on them from a solid place, right? From a emotionally stable place. And it fully was able to shift my self-concept who into like a stable, you know, a, a place where I was stable and, and then remembering that I was the creator, right? So that's what I want for you guys to remember that you are the creator, you at the helm of everything. And, and this emotional stability can really allow you to have the neutrality and to be even keeled enough to assess things adequately and really bring yourself back to a neutral place and a jumping point to then create magnificent things right so if we're not at neutrality first you know if our emotions are all up and down and all scattered we're not going to be at the place where we can really recreate our lives in a majorly beneficial way and really create the lives of our dreams with our dream partners and everything okay so some ways to emotionally regulate that have worked for me that I think will help you a lot are one, spending time in nature, okay? That one is amazing. It can really dissipate any emotional heightened feelings and it, it's full of negative ions, you know, trees and also the ocean. Um, I don't know if you know the, the, the negative ion stuff, but it's a very beneficial and can neutralize any sort of like... Um, you know, nature is like God energy, right? So it can neutralize any kind of heightened stress feelings we can have. And then we can look at things from a stable place again, right? So nature's number one. Number two is just um, physically moving your body. If you're having a really intense emotion, sometimes even if you can't go to the gym, it's too, in you know, too much of a... Uh, um, an effort to get there. You can just run around the block really quick, you know, and just kind of dissipate that charged energy. It's really important to sort of get that energy out. And, you know, and, and that's what cutting myself was trying to do as a kid, right? It's like we we do that metaphorically to ourselves as adults. We, we sort of cut ourselves to try to dissipate our emotions, you know what I mean? Metaphorically, like we're doing all these other things instead of addressing the the just heightened emotions that need to be released right because because our body can carry emotions right if we're not releasing them regularly right so and and you can feel them sometimes really intensely so running around the block is a great one or jumping up and down if you're at work and you can't like go run around just go to the bathroom and jump up and down you know if someone triggers you or you feel stressed out or you just got handed a bunch of work and you feel like overwhelmed just go, you know, you know, moving the body really dissipates emotion. It can really f be a regulatory thing for you. Okay. So that's the number two. Number three is meditation. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes this won't work if your emotions are really charged. Like if you have really heightened emotions, then meditation probably won't work because it's too, 
you know, it's standing still, it's too, too much sitting or, or laying or whatever, however you like meditating, but walking meditation is really, really key. I, lo um, I know Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot and does it in his, um, in his retreats, like they do all forms of meditation, which I think is really cool. So walking and, and reminding yourself, you know, that you are the creator, reminding yourself that your thoughts create, that this is, you know, you've adopted law of assumption, which just means your thoughts are creating everything, right? So you can kind of get a grip on yourself and you don't get so spun out and you can just, you know, walking and kind of reminding yourself that you are at the helm of this and that nothing's more powerful than you in this reality, right? Like just just reminding yourself of that is important and, and you can walk while doing it instead of sitting still because a lot of times the emotion is too intense to just like sit there um and then what's another way i do um i do like reading an excerpt of like i don't know if you if you like the bible the bible's amazing there's a lot of good really good you know teaching lessons in there about um, this stuff, you know, Neville talks about the Bible a lot too. So just reading Neville, you know, paragraph from Neville really will help dissipate emotions. And for me, that has worked really well to just sort of discharge emotions. Um, and um, let's see, I think those are like the main ones that I use. Um, you know, calling a friend also helps. You know, that's another one that's really good to just... You know, I don't recommend talking about your problems all the time, but just if you if you if you feel like you just need to talk about it once, just to get it off your chest, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a, a one that I use. You know, maybe not as much as the others, but I do I do think that's valuable. You know, in just discharging emotions, and not that you're going to carry it and keep talking about it, but just to get it get it out once. You know, um, you know, and, and it connects you with someone. You know, someone that you're close with. I think that's important. Um, even prayer with someone, that's another, that'll, that'll be the last one I, I say, because I think that one's really good if you just pray on what you want, right? Like pray for what you want, not like praying for hoping for something, right? But if you just pray in the, in the, um, in the feeling of knowing it is done, right? That can really help dissipate these heightened emotions. But most of the time when you're having heightened emotions, doing some sort of activity or moving your body really helps to release emotions. Like doing, um, another one that I do is yoga. If it's, you know, I just do a few moves. Like it doesn't have to be a whole class, you know, do, do whatever you're capable of in the moment, you know, and I, I would just do down dog, up dog, you know, and breathe with it, you know, so you sync your breathing with your movements and it can be really beneficial. And once you regulate your emotions and regulate your nervous system a little bit and that's what nature does right and and if you're walking in nature same thing like it regulates your nervous system so you're not so heightened and then you can get a grip right then you can really you know hunker down hunker back down and really remind yourself who you are and get back on your thoughts create you know monitoring your thoughts getting back into it knowing you're the creator and not getting so charged up about everything i hope this really helps you i hope you realize how important this is and um i didn't do it in 10 but close to it so um anyway my sister's gonna pick when she gets back i think she's gonna be back in maybe a day or two so keep you know leave an emoji or whatever and like the video and hopefully one of you gets a free session and or like one of you will get a free session, but hopefully you get it soon. <laughs> I'm hoping she's back tomorrow or the next day. So um, so anyway, I hope you love this. Please thumbs me up. And if you love Neville and changing your life and transformation and my unique perspective, stick around. I'd love to have you guys. Bye guys.